Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have a linear charge distribution. In other words, perhaps a long conductor with some excess charge on the conductor. And the amount of charge on that conductor can be expressed in terms of the linear charge density. We use the Greek letter lambda and express in a certain amount of charge per meter, per length, per unit length, which is meters. So in this case, it's 10 microcoulombs per meter. And we're trying to find the electric field strength and direction at some distance away from the line charge. If we draw a perpendicular line from the line charge to the point of interest, we call that the distance r, and of course r can be any distance away from that line charge. So what is the electric field strength and direction at that particular location? The way to find it is to use Gauss's law and to create a Gaussian surface where the edge of the surface goes to the point of interest. So what we're going to do is draw a cylindrical Gaussian surface like this that engulfs the entire line charge and where the edge of the Gaussian surface goes right to the point of interest. I guess I should have made it just a little bit bigger like this. Okay, so I kind of get the point. And then we engulf the entire or a section of it, we don't have to do the entire Gaussian, the, the entire line charge, we can simply do a section of it so that this now becomes the length of the Gaussian surface and this here will be the radius of the Gaussian surface so we're going to call that small r. So that's the radius of the Gaussian surface, this is the distance away, well actually that radius is going to be the same as the distance away from the, so we can call that big r because they're essentially the same. And um, notice that we're only engulfing this amount of the charge from this point right here to this point right there. And we'll call that length L. Now, what we have to realize is that we have to make some assumptions here. These are the assumptions that often get overlooked. The assumption is that the line is very, very long. So that the conductor is really long, it does, we don't show the entire length of the conductor here, but it goes a long ways in that direction and a long ways in that, this direction, and that the distance away from the conductor, this r, is relatively small compared to the total length of the conductor. So that in essence, when we're at this location right here, the conductor almost looks like it's infinite in length, and that's when this will work. If the piece of conductor is very small and we pick a distance here that is very large relative to the length of the piece of the conductor, then we have to use a very different technique. We can't use this technique right here. We actually have to integrate, but we don't need to do that here. So again, the assumption is an infinitely long conductor and we're relatively close to that conductor at this point right here relative to the length of the conductor. And then we can use Gauss's law. So Gauss's law is as follows, that the strength of the electric field times the area, the surface area of the Gaussian surface is equal to the charge inside divided by epsilon sub naught. Now also another thing that we have to realize is what do we mean by the Gaussian surface right here? Well, take a look at the Gaussian surface, it's basically a cylinder and normally the area, the surface area of a cylinder is the area of the side of the cylinder when we go all the way around like this plus the area of the two end, end sections of the cylinder. But in this case, we don't have to worry about this end of the cylinder and the other end, we only have to worry about the side of the cylinder. And why is that? The reason for that is, if we have an infinitely long line charge right here, the electric field will emanate away from the line, perpendicular to the line. So the electric field will be in this direction, will be down in this direction, and of course it'll be in every direction radially away from the charge. So up this way towards the, towards the camera, then down here to the floor and then into the board, all the way around in a radial direction. There will not be any electric field coming out of this end right here and no electric field coming out of this end except for the very end of the line charge. But since this, the line charge is virtually infinite from our perspective, we can ignore the end part of the Gaussian surface. So we only have to worry about the area that's on the side here through which the electric field will go. And this is where a lot, of, a lot of people get confused, so therefore no need to be confused. We only take the side part of the, of the cylinder, we don't take the two edge parts. So then we can move this down here, we can say that the electric field strength is equal to the charge inside divided by, now the side area that's going to be the circumference times the length. So the circumference is going to be 2 pi r, 
multiply times the length and then multiply times epsilon, uh, e sub naught, epsilon sub naught, I should say. Okay, now what about the charge inside? The charge inside will be equal to the charge of this section of the line charge right here, and that's going to be the line charge density times the length. So E is going to be equal to the linear charge density, which is lambda, times the length of that segment, which is the same as the length of the Gaussian surface that then includes that portion of the charge. So again, we can assume that the, the line will go on like this, and that the charge, of course, will be everywhere, like this. And on the other side, going on for long ways, we only take that small section. So the charge density, linear charge density, times the length of the Gaussian sur uh, section, and then we divide that by 2 pi r sub g times epsilon sub naught, and we can't forget the L there. All right. And then right away you realize that it doesn't matter how much of a section you pick, because the L in the numerator cancels out the L in the denominator, which then leaves us with E is equal to lambda divided by 2 pi r sub naught, oh, r sub g, not r sub naught, r sub g times epsilon sub naught. And then, since this is almost equal to 4 pi epsilon sub naught, we realize that uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught is equal to k. To make it easier to write and easier to calculate, we can multiply both the top and the bottom by 2. So this can be written as 2 lambda divided by 4 pi epsilon sub naught times r sub g. So this can then be written as the 1 over 4 pi epsilon sub naught, that's equal to k. So we end up with 2 k lambda divided by, the only thing that's left is r sub g in the denominator, like this. And this here will be the magnitude of the electric field relative to an infinitely long line charge. And so it only depends upon how far you are from the line charge. It's proportional to 1 over the distance, so you double the distance, half the electric field, triple the distance, one-third the electric field. So it's linearly proportional to the inverse of the distance away from that charge. And then, if you want to write this as a vector quantity, you can then say that the electric field is equal to the magnitude of the field, which is 2k lambda, 2k lambda, divided by the radius away, and then the whole thing multiplied times r unit vector. So this would be the radial unit vector away from the line charge. So this is how you would write it as a vector quantity. Or if you like this answer better, sometimes people like that better, you can then say that the strength of the electric field can then be written as lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon sub naught times r. And of course, the whole thing then multiplied times the radial unit vector. So those are the two ways in which you can write the answer. Now, we did say that lambda was 10 microcoulombs per meter. So if you want to go ahead and plug all that in, we can then use this equation right here. Hmm, I'm kind of running out of board space, so maybe I can squeeze it right here. So I'm going to take 2k lambda divided by r. And let's pick an r. Let's say that in this case we make r equal to 50 centimeters. Okay. And we're given the charge density of, the linear charge density of 10 microcoulombs per meter. And so that would be the strength of the electric field at that location. So this would be equal to 2 times 9 times 10 to the 9th. Lambda would be 10 times 10 to the minus 6 divided by r would be 0 0.5 meters. And the answer would be in newtons per coulomb. And with a calculator, what do we get? So we get 2 times 9e to the 9th times 10e to the 6 minus divided by 0.5 equals, and that would be 360,000. Yes. So that would be equal to 360,000 newtons per coulomb. And then if we want to write that in vector format, we can then say that this would be equal to 360,000 newtons per coulomb in the radially outward direction. So that would be our numerical answer written in a vector quantity. And that's how it's done.